What about the straight characters? What about the cisgender characters? Those are the burning questions over at Marvel for Pride Month 2024. And I'm not even kidding about this. I wish I was, but I am not. And we're going to talk about all of that here. This is kind of wild, okay? Um, but if you go on to enjoy this video and the content that I'm making, make sure you hit subscribe and join the revolution over here. Like, leave a comment down below, and become part of the Ericverse. Participate in a community where people talk about the things we actually love and fight back against that negative algorithm out there, that nasty algorithm. You can do it. Hit subscribe right now and leave a comment down below. All right, so Marvel Comics has decided for 2024 that focusing on queer characters in general during Pride Month isn't enough. So they have to do something different. They have to switch it up, and make it a little bit better for all of us queer people. It says Marvel Comics will be celebrating Pride Month this year by looking beyond those of us in the LGBTQIA plus community and focusing on those who support them, the allies. Hmm. That's quite interesting. Okay, so the month that is dedicated to like queer people as a whole, queer history, diversity, all of that. And that month we need to extend a handout and feature and highlight the straight cisgender people who are our saviors swooping in to save the day. All right. As revealed in Marvel Comics June 2024 solicitations, the publisher will be doing a series of eight variant covers under the theme of Pride Allies. Okay, that's a, at least we have an idea of what that means. So these are gonna be variants of the actual issues that highlight the allies. So maybe not the whole comic, just the covers, maybe? These eight covers will be on Marvel's top books, including X-Men, Amazing Spider-Man, and Captain America, and will be drawn by two artists, Betsy Cola and Davi Go. This, in addition to its annual Marvel's Voices Pride Anthology, which this year is being published May 29th as X-Men Wedding Special Number 1. So what we can tell from that release, or at least what I can take away from that release, is that they're going to be doing variant covers that focus on allies. So maybe, maybe it's not as bad as it seems. Maybe the comics are still going to be focused on queer stories, during Pride Month, and we're just going to have covers with the allies on them. And this all comes down to something that I think us as gay people, as queer people, hear quite often. Um, it's about capitalism. It's about rainbow capitalism, pink capitalism, whatever you want to call that, uh, performative allyship. It's about all of that. We're not stupid. We're not oblivious to it. We understand how pandering works. We understand how capitalism works. Uh, my argument has always been it doesn't really matter because the material benefit from that is much greater than what the companies are doing. Because look, Newsflash, none of the top end of companies, these large companies, give a shit about any of this cultural stuff. They do not care. It's the creators that do it, the people that work for them that are willing to come in and put in the work to make those kinds of changes. The people at the top, the people sitting at the, at the board of directors and, and investors and stuff, they don't care about all this cultural stuff. They just don't. They just want to make money at the end of the day. We're aware of that. Nobody in the gay community, the queer community is too stupid to understand that. We get it. However, it's kind of weird. I would almost prefer if it's going to be, if it's just the covers, um, I get it. I don't like it. I think it's kind of scummy, um, but I understand what they're doing. They're trying to make money selling these things. And I, I think there's a little bit of cross the, you know, across the aisle pandering that's going on there. I think they're trying to appease the people that criticize Marvel for doing pride stuff in general. I, I think that's what's happening. I would love to know, maybe there's more information out there, Whose decision it actually was for this to happen? Was it like an editor-in-chief situation? Was it a creative thing where they all got together and decided to do this? Was it actual like queer people working at Marvel that were like, hey, we're going to feature allies this year? I'm really curious like how that happened, the conversation around that. Um, but I don't know if this is like as awful as it seems on the surface. But I will say DC's Pride stuff this year, the things that they're going to be doing, and as we get more information on that, I'll probably make a video talking about that. The stuff that DC is doing for Pride seems a lot more interesting than what Marvel is doing this year. And so for me, it's like, you know, do you overlook the uh, capitalistic nature of this, uh, highlighting allies over queer characters just to sell comics for the month of Pride? I saw this funny post on Twitter. I'm trying to see if I can figure out who it was that actually did this. All right, it looks like it's been shared around a lot and I can't figure it out, but I thought this was kind of funny, so I'm going to blow it up here. It's literally a picture of like all of the, or mostly straight cisgender characters, and it says Marvel voices minority adjacent. This is hilarious um, because it just sort of speak to like all the stuff we're talking about here about like highlighting 
marginalized people within the Marvel universe. Like we have mutants who are also queer. So it's like a, it's like double marginalization there uh, in the, in the Marvel universe. But this is kind of funny. Um, I do see Iceman in the back. So I guess they have one who else is here. It's just funny. Minority adjacent. It's hilarious. I also found this great article from Popverse. I'm going to put the link to this in the description box. You can go over and check it out, but they talk a little bit more in detail about this and why like all of this is a sales tactic. And it does sort of speak to just how things have gone over the years when it comes to supporting pride and why these companies don't always back down. Because believe it or not, they make money off of this. I know a lot of people out there would like to believe that that's not the case because it's such a niche audience. Uh, but they make a lot of money off of this stuff, sticking rainbow colors on the Marvel logo and putting out characters in different rainbow variants. They make money off of this. As a DJ, I can't tell you how fun it is to go work at a Pride event during the month of June where I'm extremely busy to have like some of my favorite characters in DC and Marvel done in like a cool Pride way for me to wear when I'm on stage performing or something like that. So it is kind of fun to have these things. And look, people outside of Marvel like independent artists and stuff have been doing this, this for years. Like these kinds of things were made well before Marvel was like selling them on their own website and pride merchandise, like bootleg pride merchandise of all kinds of stuff was available at pride events uh, back in the nineties and the early two thousands. Again, before a lot of rainbow capitalism, pink capital kicked off and sort of took over the space and started like, you can buy all of the stuff that a lot of uh, queer artists would have sold and made a little bit of money off of and had a small business off of um, now you can buy it like target and Walmart. So it has affected in some ways negatively towards uh, smaller businesses in the queer community, the, the bookstores, things like that. Uh, but Marvel steering away from focusing on queer people on pride. If it, if it ends up being a disaster, um, I will say I'm not shocked or surprised about it. I'm not. Uh, it's There's mistakes made during Pride Month with companies all the time. Uh, they have to realize that we we see through this stuff. We, we understand that you're like sort of pandering to make money. Um, but at the same time, you could be better about it. If you're going to, if you're going to pander, at least put a little effort in it. I think throwing the straight characters up on the front of the screens uh, or on the covers and everything just to sell comics. Uh, we get it. We get it. Look, let, let us have our month. Let, let us have, we get one month a year where we have to fight twice as hard against bigots online. So at least give us some cool covers or something to look at, <laughs> make it worth it.